Ladies and gentlemen, please join in welcoming our host for this evening, the Deputy Commandant for Programs and Resources, Lieutenant General Christopher J. Mahoney, accompanied by his wife, Mary. And now, please join in welcoming our guest of honor for this evening, the Undersecretary of Defense, Comptroller, and Chief Financial Officer, the Honorable Michael J. McCord, accompanied by his wife, Donna Rostand. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the oldest post of the Corps, Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., celebrating over six decades of performing evening parades here in our nation's capital. The ceremony you are about to witness was first conducted at the barracks on July 5, 1957. While the parade is standard for Marine units throughout the world, some elements have been modified to showcase the unique abilities of our marching and musical units. The massed formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from muzzle-loaded muskets of the past. The adjutant forms the line of battle, and in those early days, that line consisted of two or three ranks, much like the parade formation you will see this evening. Tonight, we celebrate the pride, professionalism, and esprit de corps that are hallmarks of this barracks and the Marines who have distinguished these hallowed grounds for over two centuries. They represent all Marines around the globe who embody our Corps' values of honor, courage, and commitment. begin our ceremony with a performance by the President's own United States Marine Band. The band traces its roots back to July 11, 1798, when an act of Congress authorized the Marine Corps to employ a drum major, a fife major, and 32 fifers and drummers. Today, the Marine Band has more than 150 members who proudly carry out its mission of providing music for the President of the United States and the Commandant of the Marine Corps. The band will open with a march composed by Henry Fillmore entitled, Americans We.
The most famous director of the Marine Band was legendary band leader and the March King, John Philip Sousa, who led the band from 1880 to 1892. Of all his marches, one so embodied our American spirit that in 1987, an act of Congress proclaimed it the National March of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, celebrating over 223 years of serving as the guardian of American musical tradition, the Marine Band will perform Sousa's most famous march, The Stars and Stripes Forever.
Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. was established on March 31, 1801. This site was chosen for the new Marine Garrison by President Thomas Jefferson as he rode on horseback through the new capital city, along with our second commandant, Lieutenant Colonel William Ward Burroughs. It is the oldest active post of the United States Marine Corps. Just beyond the north end of the parade deck stands the historic Home of the Commandants. It has been the residence of every Marine Commandant since its completion in 1806. The present occupants are the 38th Commandant and his lady, General and Mrs. David H. Berger. During our nation's bicentennial in 1976, the Barracks and the Commandant's house together were designated a National Historic Landmark. The flag flying over the barracks this evening is a replica of the National Ensign, displaying 15 stars and 15 stripes that would have flown here in 1801.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to introduce the official mascot of Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., Private Chesty the 16th. A pedigree English Bulldog, Private Chesty the 16th, enlisted in the Marine Corps on 14 March 2022 and completed recruit training on 25 March 2022. The first barracks mascot was named in honor of the most decorated Marine in history, Lieutenant General Louis B. Chesty Puller, a name that has been inherited by every mascot of the oldest post.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors. The Marine Corps Color Guard before you is unique. Flanked by two Marine Riflemen, our national flag is carried by the Color Sergeant of the Marine Corps, while the Marine to his left carries the official battle color of the Marine Corps. The 55 streamers and silver bands displayed with the battle color commemorate the military campaigns in which Marines have participated. They span the entire history of our nation, from the Revolutionary War to the combat operations in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. Decorated with palms, oak leaf clusters, and stars, they represent more than 400 awards and campaigns of the United States Marines. It is the privilege of Marine Barracks Washington, D.C. to be entrusted with the custody of this battle color. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
sir. The greatest one. Check your post. The Marines in the Spotlight represent over seven decades of marching and rifle drill precision, a legacy of honor, commitment, and discipline that began during the Sunset Parades of 1948. The M1 rifles they carry with fixed bayonets are standard for all our marching platoons and weigh in excess of 10 and 1 half pounds. The platoon executes its drill sequence without verbal cadence or commands. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Barracks Washington, D.C. proudly presents the United States Marine Corps Silent Drill Platoon.
United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps will open its concert this evening with a march composed as a tribute to United States Naval Service personnel whose heroic actions inspired these famous words, Uncommon Valor. The concert continues with the theme of the HBO miniseries, The Pacific, based on personal accounts of Marines from World War II, aptly and simply named, Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. is proud to present the Commandant's Own United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps.
Formed in 1934, the Commandant's Zone has the distinction of being the only active duty drum and bugle corps currently serving in the United States Armed Forces. This evening's concert will close with a timeless and triumphant work by Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, the 1812 Overture. Tonight's performance will feature the saluting battery of the barracks, which will be fired by the body bearer section of the oldest post. Ladies and gentlemen, celebrating over 88 years of marching and musical excellence, here is once again, the Commandant's Own.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege for Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. to have as our guest of honor this evening, the Under Secretary of Defense, Comptroller, and Chief Financial Officer, the Honorable Michael J. McCord. Joining our distinguished guests in the reviewing area are the Deputy Commandant for Programs and Resources, Lieutenant General Christopher J. Mahoney, and the Commanding Officer of Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., Colonel Robert A. Sutcher. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. As we prepare for pass in review, please direct your attention to the two marching companies assembled before you. These companies are comprised of infantry marines who were hand-selected to serve at Marine Barracks, Washington. In addition to parade support, these companies conduct joint service honor ceremonies at the Pentagon, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and the White House. These marines also have the solemn duty and distinct honor of performing dignified transfer ceremonies for fellow marines who have made the ultimate sacrifice while serving our country, as well as laying our marines and their families to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. When not performing ceremonial functions, the marines of companies A and B hone their infantry skills in preparation for future service in combat units of the Marine Corps' Fleet Marine Forces. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise when the colors approach you and be seated when they have passed.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join us as we observe evening colors. As we bring the evening parade to a close, the ceremonial bugler of Marine Barracks, Washington, will emerge atop the ramparts and pay tribute to our beloved fallen comrades by sounding taps. This historic bugle call originated in the U.S. during the mid-1800s as a way of signaling to troops the day's end and lights out. It would later become a way of saluting the honored dead throughout our American Civil War. Today, it is the final and perhaps most solemn element performed at all military funerals. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as we now honor those gallant men and women who have given their lives in the service of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. You are free to depart the barracks at this time, and we ask that you please remain clear of center walk until the official party has departed and the crescent has been dismissed. Those guests who are interested will then have an opportunity to meet and photograph Chesty the 16th, the drum majors of the President's Zone, and the Commandant's Zone.